Hello and welcome to the physics topic, physical changes. Lesson one, what are they? We're going to look at what physical changes are and give you some examples and how you can recognise them. So you've got three images there, one of the ice lolly, pan of water boiling and one of some icicles. All of these are either undergoing or will undergo physical changes. This means that there is no chemical reaction, which also means that there isn't a change in mass. OK, so if we look at them one by one, a physical change um, is caused by the change in temperature. So that ice lolly heating being heated up by the sun, the mass of the frozen ice lolly is the same as the mass of the melted ice lolly. There's no change in mass. Now, with the pan of water, um, when there's a physical change, you're usually changing its state of matter. So um, you might go from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, but the mass doesn't change. So the mass of the water and the mass of the gas will be exactly the same, even though they have changed state. And as I already mentioned, there's no chemical reaction. That means the particles stay the same. However, their arrangement does change and the amount of energy that the particles has varies. It can change as well, because if they are changing, for example, from a liquid to a gas, those particles require more energy. As a result, they move more, which means their arrangement changes as well. I'm going to take a look at what sublimation is. And very simply, it's where substances like carbon dioxide, so solid carbon dioxide, known as dry ice, can change state, but they skip out a stage. So it will go straight from being a solid to a gas. Um, what's important to remember is the mass of the gas that you've got after sublimation is exactly the same as the mass of the solid that you had. The rest of these images here give you some other examples of sublimation. So you've got the mothballs, you've also got snow and you've also got air freshener. All of those can change state from a solid directly to a gas. Remember, that means the mass is still the same in the solid state and the gas state. Right. Next up is to be clear on what dissolving is. So you, you will you can see this from the diagram here where the, uh, like an Alka-Seltzer or an aspirin tablet has been dropped into a glass of water. Now, with dissolving, it's worth remembering that that tablet will have an exact mass and there'll be a mass of the water. The mass of both of those do not change. So the solid substance, the tablet in this case, is dissolving to form a different solution. If it's a tablet like aspirin, it's a solution that you will then take um, as a painkiller. Now, the mass of the substance is the same as before. So with dissolving, it's really important to remember this is a physical change, so it is reversible. So we can evaporate that liquid and we would be left behind with the solid just as it was before, maybe not in the complete perfect round tablet that it was before, but the solid would exist because it had been reversed. OK, once you'd evaporated all the liquid off. That's important to remember. So we're just talking about another example of a physical change. Now, with all these changes of state taking place with these physical changes, the properties of the substances can change. So the properties of the solid are different to when that substance becomes a liquid. So you've got an example there of ice cream. Um, you've got three scoops of ice cream and you've also got the ice cream, the liquid ice cream running down the cone. So within the solid, we're talking in terms of particles. So the particles are arranged closely together. However, in a liquid, they're spaced in a more random arrangement so they can move over one another. They're able to flow. OK, within the solid, they're not easily compressed, so they can't flow, can't flow. But um, in the liquid, they can. So although the mass will stay the same, the properties once they've changed state is different. So one last thing for you to think about is why does ice float on water? And it's important here to know that when ice melts to become water, the particles are becoming closer together. So 
the water's density increases. However, when the water has frozen, the ice has more volume. So it's taking up less space, but it's less dense. And that's why you can see the ice cubes floating in the glass and the iceberg floating in the sea there.